All right, guys. Hey, listen, man. This your boy Stogie, uh, coming at y'all from Palm Beach, Harley Davidson. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it so much. Y'all have no idea how much. Um, so, uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about today, uh, be it November first, okay? Be it that it's November first, we are coming into the last quarter of 2024, okay? So, uh, we've had an interesting year in Harley. Uh, you know, just like I said, it's been an interesting year. I like to talk to people about it, you know, give them some some basic content or some texture of the year. Um, the crazy part is, is that out of all of the stuff that we've been going through this year, um, Harley Davidson, the company, right? Like not the dealerships, but the company on a whole, uh, it's up about 12 to 15 percent overall over the year, right? So they've sold more motorcycles in 2024 than ever before. Now, um, uh, I'm sorry, before versus 2023, okay? Now, the good part is, is that it's multiple reasons why, right? Um, like, I think we could have sold more um, if we didn't have the whole uh, woke scandal, you know, a couple of months ago uh, that people were very adamant about. That has died down a lot. Um, even though people initially reacted um, Harley consumers are still basically Harley consumers for the most part. Um, all of the people who were going to defect and buy an Indian and burn their Harley and all of that nonsense, uh, you know, that's kind of what's happening. Um, so it's kind of withheld the test of time. Uh, I think that the new model change is another reason why the dealerships, I'm sorry, Harley Davidson, the motor company has done very well. In 2024, I think some of the color schemes and the CVO ST, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the CVO Rogue Glide ST 2024 has brought back some life. Uh, it's kind of like <clears throat> gave some blood back to, you know, Harley where people are really adamant about coming to the dealership and, uh, and different things of that nature. So, uh, like I said, 2024 has been an interesting year. Um, you know, uh, as far as Harley is concerned, uh, the things that have happened with the election, uh, things that have happened with the economy have caused uh, financing and uh, uh, different things of that nature. It's, it's caused us to uh, maneuver a little differently. It caused us to make changes uh, where Harley has done all types of uh, financial options in order to help consumers buy bikes, right? Uh, so 2024, uh, even though it was a rough year economy-wise, uh, the interest rates, if you had, you know, probably a 680 or higher, you probably had some of the best interest rates you've had pound for pound in a long time uh, with Harley. So these are some of the good things. Now, I'm going to do another video on my top five Harleys uh, in 2025. Uh, if you look at episode 112, uh, I did the five worst Harleys. Man, that was, uh, <laughs> that was, and what I meant by worst was not just motorcycle sales, because it's, it's, uh, it's not always about that. Uh, but it is about, you know, street cred. You know, do you see that bike on the street? Do you see people talking about it online? Uh, do people call into the dealership about it? Uh, do you see it on social media anywhere? Uh, and it's certain bikes that you just are not going to see. Okay, is and people have bought them, but you probably is a very high likely chance that you haven't seen these bikes. So make sure you watch uh, my episode uh, one. I think it's one twelve or one eleven. Uh, you know, top five worst Harleys in twenty twenty four. I'm going to do a top a top five list of twenty twenty fours of the best Harleys. So you'll see the 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 most common ones and and you'll see the ones that are always people are talking about it they're always on the phone about it you always see them online so you'll see those too but the whole 2024 year man um 
like I said, it's been very, it's been kind of like a roller coaster, you know, it's been kind of like a roller coaster. Um, I think that sometimes, um, you know, people are, are um, changing the dynamic of, of how Harleys are, uh, how Harleys are doing. Uh, we have a whole new class of people coming in every single year uh, getting into the Harley game, right? I'm talking about from people who are on the beginning level who have never ridden uh, and they're fresh out of the motorcycle school or there are people who are been have over 300, 400,000 miles on multiple bikes over their tenure, their lifetime on motorcycles. So uh, the culture is changing, right? Um, the dynamic of Harley is changing. Uh, and if you're not with the changes, then it just kind of is what it is. If you think that Harley is going to bring back the old school knuckleheads and shovel heads and, you know, if you think they're going to bring that back, man, nah, that's not about to happen. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it's not, okay? Uh, what, it's, what it's really designed to do is to kind of become more innovative and take you on to a technology ride and try to bring you as many amenities as you can uh, from a Harley Davidson. So, uh, like I said, I really am impressed with the 2024 models um, this year. Few bugs, but not that many, not nowhere near as much as a, uh, a new launched bike um, uh, uh, causes. It's nowhere near, it's nowhere near. Especially, I don't know if you guys remember when they went from the 103 to the 107, how everybody was scared of the, uh, the Milwaukee 8 uh, in 2017 or 2018, whatever year it, it started. But they were all scared of the bike, right? No, I like my twin cam, da 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 da. And now everybody's on Milwaukee 8. They've kind of perfected that motor now, right? Like you don't really hear any problematic Milwaukee 8s. That's kind of like the cool part. But as far as um, technology is concerned, the things that they're doing, man, uh, you know, like I said, man, I, the one thing that I really want them to do in 2025 is to put adaptive ride height on the bikes with Milwaukee 8 motors, right? So right now, adaptive ride height is a feature on the Rev Max bike, specifically, specifically the Pan America and the Pan America CVO, that, uh, that when you're riding, the bike automatically raises. And then when you're slowing down, the bike automatically lowers. It gives you better suspension. Uh, it gives you a better riding position when the bike is up a little bit higher when you're riding versus lower uh, from you bottoming out while you're riding. But I would love for them to put that adaptive ride height on one of the 2024, uh, 2025 models. Um, you know, it's just certain bikes, man, that like I said, just disappointed me this year. Um, I, I don't really want to go into it right now. I think that's another video for another day. But we're just talking about 2024, uh, and Harley Davidson, the ups and downs of it, like I said, from a from a financing standpoint, uh, one of the big issues this year was trade values. Oh my God, trade values! Because it's so many different bikes, man, the trade values have like taken a dip. So, once again, guys, 2024 overall, I give it a B minus. Okay, a B minus for 2024. Um, there could have been a lot of things tweaked. Um, you know, they shouldn't have made so many models this year uh, as far as dumping the bikes on the dealerships. Uh, I love the fact that they, and what's giving them to the B is what they've done with the financing. Like I said, if you have pretty decent credit right now, you're getting some really good uh, interest rates as far as um, going through Harley. So once again, guys, man, I appreciate you guys. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick, what my take on 2024 is uh, coming into the, second to the last month we're going to start getting into the christmas season and holiday season and thanksgiving season and everybody's going to be out riding there's going to be all kinds of toy drives coming up it's going to be all kinds of stuff uh going on from a motorcycle standpoint uh here in south florida uh here at the dealership man i wish i had the flyer uh but we have a toy run coming up here i think it's on the 16th of uh, don't, actually, don't quote me on that because I don't remember the day. But I'll be posting another on my on my channel, uh, letting you know. Also, it'll be posted on my IG at Stogaside uh, and the Stogie Ely. That's my, my other channel that I use uh, on IG. Okay. So, uh, like I said, they have the uh, the the Markham Park, to the Toys for Tots. That's the, another main one. So you'll be seeing all kinds of toy drives coming up. 
So the Christmas holiday and Thanksgiving holiday are here, right? So I just wanted to come before all of that stuff gets in, let you guys know about how I feel about 2024. And like I said, the ups and downs to it. Uh, the thing that got the worst grade this year was how uh, the owner of the company, Yakin, uh, how he handled himself this year. F, all day long, right? It's, it's not cool what he did, how he did it. Uh, but like I said, Harley is offset with uh, interest rates and things that they have done in order to bring up, you know, and it's little things in between, like I said, from a standpoint, uh, D, I give a D on model, on model delivery and, and overbearing the market with bikes. Uh, that is what causes trade values to go down. Uh, but I give a C to distributing the bikes and everybody has an equal mix. Um, and then I give a B to um, uh, to the fact that the color combinations and the new model releases were really good this year. And then A was the financing, right? Like these these interest rates that they've had, you you haven't seen these in a long time with Harley. So I just gave you a grading scale of some of the different things that I, that I thought of why 2024 was such a good year. Listen guys, I appreciate you once again. Thank y'all for subscribing to the channel, man. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel, right? We appreciate everything. Let's go.